Welcome back to Mental Math. This integral is a beast. The combination of arctangent, a parameter phi, and the complex denominator makes direct integration a nightmare. To solve this, we need a special tool. The strategy is to use Feynman's trick. We'll introduce a new parameter, differentiate the entire integral with respect to it, solve the simpler resulting integral, and then integrate back. Let's define a function, i of a, by replacing the parameter phi in the arctangent with a new variable, a. Our ultimate goal is to find the value of i of phi. Now for the magic step. We differentiate i of a with respect to a, moving the derivative inside the integral. Since the only term that depends on a is the arctangent, the derivative is straightforward. The partial derivative of arctangent of a times x with respect to a is 1 over 1 plus a squared x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is x. This is a massive simplification. The x in the numerator and denominator cancel out. We are left with a much more manageable integral of a rational function. We can solve this using partial fractions. Let's break down the integrand into simpler pieces. We set up our partial fraction decomposition. The goal is to find the constants a and b. Multiplying through by the common denominator gives us this equation. Now, let's expand the right side. Next, we group the terms by powers of x squared. For this equation to hold true for all values of x, the coefficients on both sides must match. On the left, the coefficient of x squared is 0, and the constant is 1. This gives us a system of two linear equations with two unknowns, a and b. From the first equation, we can express b in terms of a. Now we substitute this into the second equation. Solving gives us the values for a and b. Now we substitute these back into our integral for i prime of a. We can now solve these two simpler integrals. Let's evaluate each piece of the integral separately. For the first integral, we factor out phi squared from the denominator to get it into a standard arctangent form. We use a u substitution letting u equal x over phi. Substituting and integrating gives us 1 over phi times arctangent of u. Evaluating from 0 to infinity, we get the final result, pi over 2 phi. Now for the second integral. Let u equal a times x. After substitution and integration, this evaluates to a times pi over 2. Now we combine these results and simplify. Substituting our two results back into the expression for i prime of a. First, let's factor out pi over 2. Next, we find a common denominator inside the parentheses. The denominator is a difference of squares, which factors into 1 minus a phi times 1 plus a phi. This reveals a common factor, 1 minus a phi, which cancels out perfectly. After all that work, i prime of a simplifies to this beautiful clean expression. Now we integrate this expression with respect to a to find our original function i of a. This is a straightforward natural logarithm integral. The integral of 1 over 1 plus a phi is 1 over phi times the natural log of 1 plus a phi. This simplifies to pi over 2 phi squared times the natural log plus our constant of integration, c. To find c, we evaluate i of a at a convenient point. The easiest choice is a equals 0. Looking at our original definition of i of a, if we set a to 0, the arctangent becomes 0, making the entire integral 0. Plugging a equals 0 into our integrated result, we see that since the natural log of 1 is 0, the constant c must also be 0. 
So this is our general solution for the integral for any value of a. We are now at the final step. The original problem asked for i of phi. All we need to do is substitute a with phi in our general solution. And there it is. The value of our formidable integral is pi over 2 phi squared times, the natural log of 1 plus phi squared. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through Feynman's technique, hit that like button and subscribe for more mathematical adventures. See you next time.